de República, buenas tardes. El día de hoy estamos en lo que es la primicia, lo que va a ser el día de mañana el Innovate Summit y estamos aquí en Mil y Una, aquí en Zona 10 y vamos a platicar con el autor del libro Unleash Your Inner Company y él es John Chisholm, right? <laughs> so welcome to Guatemala, John, and welcome to Republic also. Well, Marie Ines, thank you very much. It's great to be here. Yeah, well, let's talk about, I know it's not your first time here in Guatemala, so tell us a little about, about your first time. That was an interesting story for me. <laughs> well, the first time was in 2011. Okay. And I was here with a conference on Roatan uh, in early 2011 that was put on or organized partly by uh, uh, University of Francisco Marroquin, UFM. Okay. And uh, it was all about seasteading. Uh, creating independent communities and companies on the open seas. And this is an uh, idea that's gotten a lot of traction since then, well, some traction. And then uh, I was invited later that year to come back and uh, be part of the first, what I believe was the first TEDx at UFM, oh TEDx God. UFM in nice. August of 2011. And uh, my topic was Unleash Your Inner Company. And I had a lot of material, a full day's workshop of techniques and uh, for starting your own business. And uh, of course, for a TEDx talk, I had to reduce that down to 18 minutes. Of course, yeah. And that was so clarifying that for the first time, I realized I could turn this vast amount of content that I had into a book. Uh, because the 18 minutes forced me to figure out what was most important. And so that became uh, Unleash Your Inner Company, which has now been translated into Chinese. And uh, soon in Spanish, right? And soon will be in Spanish Yay. as well. So uh, that's my very fond early memory of wow. uh, Guatemala and UFM. Oh, wow. So let's talk a little bit about entrepreneurship. Why entrepreneurship is so important, especially in countries like Guatemala for you? Well, it is very important, and the reason it's so important is because so much of employment, so many jobs are created by young companies, young, fast-growing companies. Not all companies uh, hire and uh, create a lot of jobs, hire a lot of people, uh, but a few of them do. And so if you have lots of companies being started, a few of those companies will grow to be large. Uh, the data shows that not that much employment, new employment, is created by well-established companies. Most of the new employment is created by a few of the young companies. Oh. So you want to have as many uh, new companies being started as possible so that there'll be a few that make it to be big. And anything you can do from a regulatory environment to promote uh, entrepreneurship is a good thing. Yeah. And it's one of the things I talk about in really? my book. Oh, There's okay. a chapter on uh, regulation and a chap and an appendix on uh, with advice for policymakers. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the book of <laughs> Unleash Your Inner Company. Can you give us a little summary of what it's yes. the book about? It is a 10-step guide to discovering, launching, and scaling the ideal business for you, starting with unsatisfied customer needs in areas that you're passionate about. Now, there are thousands of unsatisfied customer needs, even just in the areas you're passionate about. You may not see them at first. The book helps you recognize them. And then what we do is match those unsatisfied customer needs up with you with your skills, the technologies you know about, your assets, your, your physical, financial, and knowledge-based assets, okay. uh, your relationships, your reputation, and your strengths as inner strengths, as in inner strengths. That spells the word STARS okay. with two A's and two R's. Your skills, technologies, assets, achievements, relationships, reputation, and strengths. And we see where the fit is the best between each of those customer needs and your STARS overall. And where that fit is the best is where you're most likely to be successful. And so it's an iterative process to refine the customer needs, strengthen your stars. That may mean developing skills, 
finding the right co-founder, developing prototypes, doing market research. Mm -hmm. Finally, narrowing it down to the one best fit between you and one of those unsatisfied customer needs, and that's the company that we launch and scale up. Wow, that's nice. Sounds nice for me. I, I'm, I'm going to read it, okay? Great. <laughs> so, for can you give us an advice of the uh, in your work, your experience, work experience? Okay, can you give us a little bit, of, a little advice in all these years of, of work experience you had? Well, gosh, uh, tons of of uh, three decades. I of should, right? <laughs> uh, uh, thoughts come to mind. Uh, I think more people give up too soon than stick with an idea for too long. And so uh, it's constantly a battle if you're not making progress, should you give up and try something else or you, should you stick with it? I do think most people give up too soon. And here's a key, if you stick closely to the real customer need, then you're less likely to enter that state where uh, you aren't making any progress. Uh, if you really have a well-defined, clear-cut customer need, uh, then you will find a way more easily to address that need. And so when I'm listening to business plan presentations, for example, people seeking angel capital, uh, the first thing I listen for is a real unsatisfied customer need. And so be sure not to leave that out in your pitch uh, if uh, it's so easy for us engineers in particular, and I'm an engineer, maybe you are too, to become enamored with a new technology. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. it may be that to satisfy that customer need, you don't even need that technology. Uh, and, and so focus on the need, and that way you'll be sure that you address the need. I like to say that uh, my first company, uh, st I started with a really cool technology for which there was no market need. Wow. <laughs> and it took me six to nine months to let go of that idea and swap it for something for which there was a real market need. That is uh, the ability to, uh, to do online surveys. Oh, that okay. company was Decisive Technology and today it's part of Google. So it really does work. Start with the customer need and that way you will be sure that your business really does address the customer need. One other suggestion, yeah. anyone can become an innovator. You can become an innovator. Some people have the idea that you have to be born to be an innovator and you can't, uh, it's not for everyone. I don't buy that at all. Anyone can become an innovator just by combining things you already know in novel ways. The STARS chart that I mentioned previously uh -huh, yep. is a really useful tool for doing that because your skills and technologies are particularly useful uh, for innovating. If you can find a combination of those skills and technologies that you have that might not have been uh, combined before and, and try to think of a customer need that that combination could satisfy, you might be the best or first person in Guatemala or the world for that matter wow. to address that customer need using that particular approach. That sounds nice. <laughs> Well, thank you, John, for the interview, for being here in Guatemala, here in República, of course. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. <laughs> bueno, ya escucharon, amigos de República, el mejor consejo que John les puede dar el día de hoy es nunca rendirse e identificar pues, esas necesidades que tienen sus consumidores. Esperemos que mañana podamos platicar un poco más con él y también de lo que va a pasar aquí en el Innovate Summit. Hasta pronto.